Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Activate those notifications by clicking on that bell icon below. And if you're back to the channel, welcome back. We're doing another drawing tutorial. Today we are gonna talk about Jose Guadalupe Posada. And you're probably like, who was that? You've already seen his work and a lot of people have been influenced by his work. He was the one that created what we know now today as the Day of the Dead. Katrina. So that's what we're going to draw today, but a little bit more simplified version because I think this was a little bit too complex. A little bit of history on Jose Guadalupe Posada. He was born in 1852 and died in 1913. He was born in Aguascalientes, Mexico. He was a lithographer, which is a printing made from a stone or a metal plate. Uh, he was 19 years old when he started working for a newspaper titled El Jicote. At the newspaper, he started, you know, dabbling in caricatures and illustrations for the paper. He was also a teacher for five years, and his caricatures or his illustrations, what have you, they were always, you know, dark in humor. It consisted of social satire and always criticizing the elite people in Mexico. Somewhere between 1910 and 1913, he created what we know as La Catrina, but he titled her La Calavera Garbancera. It sounds like garbanzo, and I'm pretty sure it does something to do with garbanzo beans, but I'm not quite sure why. So anyway, this image was meant to poke fun, you know, of those who rejected their indigenous origins. A lot of the elite thought that they were better than the rest of the Mexicans because they had you know, European descent. So there was like this separation of class and these illustrations kind of mocked those people that thought they were better because of the wealth that they had. And he once said, you know, whether you're blonde or brunette, blonde because you know, the ones with the European descent, rich or poor, everyone is gonna end as a skeleton. And that's right, we're all headed there. So then, Diego Rivera, who you know was married to my one of my favorite artists, Frida Kahlo, was actually a, a big fan of La Catrina Garbancera. La Catrina, La Calavera Garbancera. So he was a fan of it, so he introduced it in one of his work. So in 1947, he painted the mural Tilted Dream of a Sunday afternoon in the Alameda Central. And Barrio Alameda in Mexico City is actually one of my favorite places in Mexico. One of my favorite restaurants in there is there. El Palacio de Bellas Artes is there. It's just a very, very nice area. So after Diego Rivera painted this mural here is when La Calavera Garbancera becomes La Catrina because Diego Rivera changed her name. And that is the first time that La Catrina becomes associated with death and it gets depicted in the context of death. And then shortly after there, it becomes like a symbol of Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead, which is, you know, widely celebrated in Mexico and a lot of South American countries where people celebrate the, the deceased members in their family. And it also becomes part of Halloween, American culture, I feel like, not only in America, but all the places do celebrate Halloween. I've dressed up as La Catrina once. I dressed up as a version of Frida Kahlo La Catrina. There's countless of people who have dressed up as La Catrina for Halloween. And it's everywhere from clothing, it's in graffiti, it's in the sugar skulls that you see. It's, I mean, La Catrina is even ended up in a movie, Coco. Now, is that Pixar or Disney? I'm pretty sure it's Disney. Let's ask. Hey Siri, who made the film Coco? Here's what I found from Wikipedia. R.G. Coco Disney. is a 2017 American computer I already got it, girl. fantasy Enough. film. I got it. So yeah, it was Disney. <laughs> the work of Jose Guadalupe Posada has influenced influenced countless of people throughout generations until this day. So I thought, why not draw La Catrina or La Calavera? Garbancera. But we're not going to do it this intricate because that's going to take forever and this was a lithograph, it was not even a drawing. So, but we're going to do the drawing version. I've already made, made some lines here just so I know what I'm doing. So grab your pencil, eraser, if I go too fast, slow me down. And let's get started. So I always like to start with the eyes. And since her hat is so huge and billowing, that like if this is the center of your paper your eyes are gonna be below the center point just because we need a lot of space for up here. So, you draw an egg on one side and an egg 
on the other side. Toda la noche entera. And then to make her nose, it's a heart. So if you don't know how to draw an upside down heart, just put your paper over. And then draw a heart. Kind of like a heart, just make sure it's spaced out. And then put that back over. We'll put in her eyebrow. Or her eyebrow bone because it's a skeleton. And then you're gonna bring this line down between the eye and the nose. Going to come all the way around to create that side of the face. Here you go in a little bit, come back out, and then off to the top. Right about the same height, come to the other side, bring the line down to create the other side of her head. And the same thing, the line will come in. But this one doesn't really touch. I feel like there's like a space. And then she has teeth. So we're gonna make nine teeth. If, you, if nine teeth don't fit, that's fine. So we start with the square, like rectangular shape. And then you're gonna bring this line to connect to that tooth. And then you're gonna curve up. And then there's a gap between this one. So that's two. And make another one here. There's also a gap. And this one's a little bit more rounded. So that's three. So they're progressively getting smaller. So it's like making like, like a U or an upside down smiley face. That's not a U. I can close this way. So we'll make three more. So they just come and you add the tooth. And like I said, progressively getting smaller. How many did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So then this will be seven, eight, and nine. I feel like these last three touch this line. I don't think it looks good if I make this one touch it, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit higher. Just whatever makes your drawing look good. And then there's like some lines here, like a little Oh, I don't know if I, I like that. It looks like a mustache. Oh well. Roll with it. We have the bottom teeth. We have her molar that's like back right here. And then the tooth directly in front of it. And they're all crooked. There's nine of them. And there's also space between them. They're not really connected. And they're not straight at all, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But as you're making them go up, so you create her mouth. And then we're gonna bring this line from here and then right below the teeth. This uh, these are her this is her gums. Now you come in to make her chin, go up, cross, up, and in. And then here, on the back of her head. Alright, so here is the bottom of her hat, which is just um, U-shaped. Use, use so if you can make a U-shape, you know, U, and U, and U. And they're different sizes, so... She has a big hat, so you just keep going to the edge of where you want that hat to be. So I'm just, I'm just gonna repeat the, the, the letter U and connect it. And that's where I want the hat to end, on this side, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And there we have the hat. So, if you come to about here, there's a line, 
Don't do it to the edge, but quite to the edge, because this is the inside of her hat. The same thing on this side, don't do it to the edge. Now we have the inside. Alright, and now this, we're going to do the same thing, which is the bottom of the hat, which is also in the shape of use. And this line connects to that one. Here we're going to draw her skeleton before we continue with the with this lace thing. So right underneath her chin is her elbow bone, which I don't know what it's called. So you just do an upside down U, bring it down on one side, bring it down. Actually, don't bring it down. Let's just wait. We're going to go to her neck, and you're going to make a squiggly line. Whoa. This is the vertebrae. One, two, three squigglies. And then you go out to connect to that shoulder bone. So this is our shoulder clavicle. On the other side, let's draw the clavicle, clavicle, shoulder bone. Bring it down. Her ribs. So one rib, it's kind of hollow. Two ribs. Three ribs. Same thing on the other side. One rib. Two ribs. Well, I can't fit another one. But then you do the rib cage. Squiggly line as well. I guess connected to this line. Rib cage over here. Connected to that line. Just find somewhere to connect it because it really doesn't matter because because it doesn't matter. Oh, and this is here in between. We'll put the plates. I was gonna say collagen plates, but they're not collagen plates. What is it? Cartilage plates. So now we have our skeleton. Now we can add the rest of the lace. And then in the background here, we have some billowing clouds. So, I feel like these look like bushes, not clouds. So just add some clouds. I don't like mine, I think they look like bushes. But, once you add blue, then obviously there'll be clouds. More on this side. Well, my cloud game is really bad. So to simplify this, you know, because we don't want it as difficult as a picture, we're going to draw a line on top to create, to make the lace, you know? And then bring it to the end. And then this line should touch that if you have the space for it. And then on the other side. So then in the center of the, of the hat, we're going to draw some flowers. And these flowers are, I mean, you have the center, and then you kind of make the outside shape. It doesn't have to be intricate at all. Or it could if you want them intricate. Like this one looks kind of like that. I guess like it's open, and then it has lines. one that's another kind of flower you can do here they have one that looks kind of like a starfish well <laughs> that doesn't look like a starfish it has a center point and then just lines coming in and out out of it so those three they have but you can make your own kind of flower This part, I suggest you just take free reign and do whatever you want. So now these don't, I mean, these don't actually have leaves, but I want to add leaves to them. Do your thing. Do your thing. Here she has 
like this huge giant feather. So this is the inside, which is just used, kind of like this. And then they're like waves, so just come to any point and bring it back down. You see? It's like waves. So this is the outside of the feather, and then you can add lines in here. As many or as little as you want. And then we've got to do like the inside of the feather, because it's kind of like, I don't know what it's like. Kind of like an ostrich feather, I would say. And then now the waves, these waves will be on the bottom side here. And then we've got to do this Yui thing here. And then the lines. Or if you have a better way of doing these feathers, by all means, take creative liberties. You know, and there's the lines inside. mini or as little as you want and then we got a big one over here too so the same way you did this one not the same but who cares it's my own interpretation and then more like little feathers on top These kind of look like shells, actually, not feathers. I mean, but she probably didn't have feathers in her, I mean, shells in her hat. But in ours, or in mine, she does, anyway. So that's it. That's pretty much it. Since I have space here, I feel like I need to give her, like, a bigger feather. I think I need another one here. And there we have La Catrina by Jose Guadalupe Posada. So now I'm gonna color it. I don't think I'm gonna use, well, I don't know, but I'm gonna start adding color just to see what it would look like with color. And then I'll show you throughout the process the color I decide to add. I think I'm gonna go with the flowers and I think I'm gonna go with yellow to start off. Okay, so the idea was to go with yellow, but it doesn't play well with the marker black. It bleeds, so I knew that. I don't know why I didn't think about that. So what I'm going to do is now trace the flowers a lot darker like I did here in the leaves. I'm also going to trace the clouds, and I'm doing like a pattern within the clouds. And also, we're missing like a back line here to make the top of the hat. So... This would be somewhere like that. So I'm going to trace everything very dark, even the clouds, I mean the feathers, so everything would be retraced thicker. Done with the flowers, and I filled in with black all the negative space. I probably should have made these flowers bigger so it would have popped. I think that would have been the best idea. So I'm not going to color this in with the sharp because it will take forever, so I'm going to color the inside. I'm going to paint the inside with black acrylic paint. I'm done with the clouds. I like them out. I didn't like them initially when I drew them, but now I like the way they look. So the inside of the hat is acrylic paint. It's still not completely dry. So I'm going to work on the feathers for now. So I am done. Actually, it didn't take that much to do once. What takes the longest is just drawing it, but because basically I just retraced everything and then filled in with black and then added these lines. But feel free to take your own creative liberties with this. Catrina or Calavera Garbancera. I feel like I'd still do probably more to it, like come in with some fine line and stuff like that. But what deters me from putting too much work into this is because I did it in like really cheap paper, so it's probably not going to survive. Had I done this on quality paper, then I probably would have been more intricate with 
my version of it. But anyway, that's all for today's video. So make sure to subscribe, activate those notifications, uh, watch all the other content in my channel. And until next time, adios y bye.